Hello everyone. So in this video, I thought uh, let us talk about uh, hesitation of uh, new Jira users, or I should say, someone who has uh, uh, tried using Jira but they are probably struggling. Now, I'm making this video because uh, my clients, my friends, people I know, or people who have worked with me in the past they had a similar question or I should say a concern. Now, whenever people want to start something with Jira, they are not 100% sure about uh, not just one, but a lot of things. They are not really sure about uh, how to structure their project, how workflows will work, how to configure the fields. So basically, uh, I mean, it's a problem as well. If we, if we talk about Jira, then Jira is one such tool that uh, can be customized <clears throat> and it is a great thing but at the same time it can also cause confusion and there is plenty of information online. If you search online, there are, uh, you know, at least in 2024, it was not the case but uh, at least in 2024, there are a lot of, uh, you know, videos, documentation and uh, free courses. So there is like too much information online, which is, to be honest, it's a good thing. But at the same time, uh, uh, when someone is looking for something, they are not really sure about uh, uh, how to get started because there is too much for them. It, it is, of course, you know, a, a bit overwhelming. Now, I always say and I always recommend uh, my clients or whoever is asking me this question, don't worry too much about the configurations and customizations of uh, a tool. Of course, in this case, we are talking about Jira. In the beginning, uh, I mean, of course, this stage is probably not the early stage. Usually when you are rolling out Jira in a new company, then even before they start rolling out Jira, usually there is like, a, you know, a, a team, usually procurement team, they are involved and uh, someone will uh, prepare a quote for or some some kind of initial you know pre-sale will happen then the tools team will get involved maybe your cto will get involved so i'm not talking about those early phases where uh, jira is the one such tool that will be brought in because there might be other competitors i'm talking about those situations and cases where you already have jira so that's so the assumption is that you already have jira in your organization and you want to use it. Now, the thing is that when you want to use it, then the problem is that how to get started. And that is where I thought I'll probably, you know, help you. Now, if you're on Jira Data Center or if you're on Jira Cloud, I mean, that is not really uh, the point because these things are relevant and, uh, and uh, it doesn't really matter if you're doing something on cloud. As long as you have uh, access to a Jira instance and as long as you have the ability to either create a project or at least uh, get it created from from your admin team i think you can uh, definitely get started so in the beginning i i i, I should say that first figure out uh, the kind of work that you're doing are you doing jira or, or are you are you going to use jira for technical projects or non technical projects that is number one if you're doing something technical then uh, are you going to use uh, jira for uh, maybe software development or maybe IT support or support desk. So if you're doing anything with support, then uh, of course there is no doubt that you have to use Jira service management. If you're doing anything with software development or some kind of planning, then of course you have to use Jira software. Of course, uh, you can also use Jira core or G if you talk about Jira cloud, just Jira, basically non-technical projects. So if you know what you are going to do broadly, I mean, don't get, get into the details, in the beginning, I should say that uh, if you are on Jira uh, data center, then just create uh, or just get a simple project credit. Maybe maybe create uh, or get, get a project with uh, maybe simple workflow to do in progress and done. And yes, a simple workflow. Don't worry too much about the details. And then uh, maybe do some kind of uh, early adoption or uh, not, I'm not saying POC. Because when you do POC, your intention is to try a tool and then uh, say no to it if you don't like it. So just get started 
and uh, use something very simple and of course i'm i'm making this video for those cases where uh, you may not have access to an experienced skilled jira consultant if you have someone with you or if you can afford or if you have budget then of course you know hire someone but if if you don't really have uh, anyone guiding you then in the in the beginning just create a project or get a simple project created and start using it uh without any configuration without any uh extreme customization just try to create uh, issues if you're doing soft, something with software then of course create epics then break it down into stories and break it down into subtasks if you're doing something with uh, or some kind something for a legal or marketing team then simply create task and of course your workflow is same to do in progress done and if you're doing something with jira service management then you do have like few more options you may have incident service request but at the same time in the beginning i would say that don't bother customizing it although you might be disappointed but uh, good thing about jira is that uh, you always have the option to customize it so that is the most wonderful thing you can get started with any configuration of course first you have to figure out the only thing that you need to figure out is whether you need to use jira software or jira service management if you're on jira data center if you're on jira cloud then you just need to figure out whether you want to use jira service management or jira right and that is it so <clears throat> because migrating from a scrum based project to a jira service management based project might be i mean it is possible but not it is not like super straightforward but if you are using jira service management then adding a new issue type or maybe a new request type or adding some queues or tiles on the portal you can always you know do it later on or maybe whenever you have budget or maybe whenever you have knowledge similarly for jira software in the beginning start with a simple workflow start with the basic uh, or out of the box configurations and i always say that the out of the box configurations of jira work for 80 to 90% of use cases and uh, of course people know that jira can be customized and uh, it can be configured so people try to get things right on day one they try to capture all the requirements understand how their teams are doing right now what improvements can be done in jira and what automations can be done in jira so in the beginning i should say that uh, of course there is no harm in doing that but there i mean i'm just giving you an alternate approach in the beginning just get started and then uh, later on figure about f- figure out how you can enhance it how you can refine it so i hope i have given you some ideas in this video like on on how to get started and uh, how not to hesitate when it comes to start using jira so yeah that is all that is all i wanted to talk about in this video i hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new today thank you very much